my second mother kicked me to the curb after what happened to my first mother. So I'm going to plan revenge. Let's start at the beginning though. I'll tell you exactly what happened. I have no such thing as a family I'm related to by blood. No mother, no father, grandparents, or siblings. The people I consider to be family are the ones I've chosen to be in my life. As for the only people alive who I share blood with, I've not thought about them in years. I used to cry every day because of them, and I experienced the darkest of my life in their care, and no one helped me. But eventually, they did not matter in my life until she walked into my office when I was specifically asking not to see anyone on that day. She had changed on the outside, but she was still the same shrewd witch on the inside. The woman I speak of is the closest thing I have to a mother, after my mother left me. I do not remember a lot about my mother, but I know she loved me. I know that if time would have permitted her, she would have came back and taken care of me. Even now, at age 30, I harbor no hard feelings for the woman who made a lot of sacrifices, so I would have a better life. I do not know who my father is. He left my mom when she was a couple months pregnant, which was when she showed up at her sister's place. My Aunt Laura, who's now 50, said she refused to tell her who my father was. My mother gave birth to me and worked odd jobs to support us, but she was clearly struggling and surviving on the handouts that Laura gave her. Laura had this perfect family. A husband who owned several businesses, two children. My mom was a college dropout who got pregnant by her boyfriend, who bolted, and she had no work experience. I have no grandparents to speak of as they put my mom and sister into foster care when they were young. Either way, my mom struggled to take care of me until I was seven. This was when she got the opportunity of a lifetime to work overseas. The money would be enough for her to give me a better life and much more than what her other two jobs paid her. I do not remember much of what happened. All I had were accounts from my aunt and the few conversations I had with her when she was overseas. Since Laura was the only family that my mom had, she left me in her care. Before all that, Laura treated me like one of her own children and I loved her a lot. I was sad about my mom leaving, but glad that I would get to play with my cousins. They had better toys than me and their mom always ordered food. Those things may seem trivial to me now, but growing up without some of the luxuries that they had, they were living the good life, in my opinion. However, Laura switched up on me so fast that I forgot the kind and generous person that she was. As the years passed, I realized that she was jealous of all the opportunities that my mom was getting and the money she was earning while all Laura did was be a housewife. This started with how upset she would get when visitors would come and ask about my mom, and they would be so impressed with her achievements. The first time, she took it out on me. I could not believe it. She took her kids and husband and went out for a meal, leaving me at home and saying that if I wanted a meal, my mother would provide it. She was always complaining that my mom never sent her enough money, and she had to spend all her money on me. I called her a liar one time and said my mother was honest. She took out a belt and beat me. The Christmas of that year was memorable because I did not get any presents. Laura and her husband got presents for their sons but did not get anything for me. I was forced to stay in my room all day while they enjoyed their Christmas dinner. That was because ever since mom left, she's been treating me like a slave. Anyways, back to Christmas. I spent it alone in my room, crying, wishing that my mom would come back from overseas. But two weeks later, a courier arrived at home, and it was addressed to me. There was so many toys, more than I could ever imagine. Ones that were even bigger and better quality than the ones my cousins had. 
The look of envy on their faces when they saw me with these toys was priceless. I felt that they have gotten repaid for making me miserable on Christmas Day. Karma. Therefore, I ended up bragging and making fun of them. That was because for a moment, a sweet little moment, I thought I had one up on them. Laura was two steps ahead of me because she gave the majority of the toys to my cousins and left me with very few. I could not understand why she would do such a thing. As a child, that was the most heartbreaking thing that she could have ever done. So I lashed out at her and hit her with a toy. She got angry and took the rest of the toys and told me I did not deserve them. That night, like many nights before, I went to bed crying. You must be wondering why I did not just call my mother and tell her what was happening. Laura lied and threatened me to keep my mom shut, saying that my mother would never believe me or she would hate me if I was the reason she came back. My cousins were no better. They saw the way she treated me and used me as a scapegoat for all their crimes. I was beaten and emotionally abused for such a long time that it started to reflect in my schoolwork. I got involved in the wrong crowd by the time I was 16, which was the time I started drinking. I enjoyed how little I cared about them when I was drunk. I was their little disappointment, the only one that they pretend not to be related to when we're in public. As for mom, she tried her hardest to visit me at least once a year which was a time I looked forward to all year round. In exchange for the quality time away, all I had to do was sing my aunt praises. At least in that regard, she kept her promises and did not tell mom how many times I'd been suspended from school. When my mom came home, all the stuff I'd been going through did not matter at all. She would be so proud of me, give me life advice, and tell me she loved me. This encouraged me to be a better person and I would be for a few months. Then she laughed and Laura made me blow a fuse. Or Rick blamed me for the cigarettes found in his room. Then it would be back again. Just like a catch-22. Then my whole world came tumbling down on that very eve of my 18th birthday. My mom's not been answering her phone calls throughout the whole day. And I was having a bad day. By then, I did not care that Laura refused to spend any money on me or give me presents my mom sent me because I was making pocket money helping a few local businesses. The only birthday present I wanted was for my mom to call me. A call did come when I just got to sleep. My aunt woke me up, barely able to speak. I remember her telling me that there was a break-in at my mother's house and she's been killed. Do you know what I wanted to do at that moment? I wanted to see her because there was no way it was true. Death came for everyone, but it did not fit her. Nothing bad fitted her. She was not a person who deserved to be murdered in cold blood by a robber. But unfortunately, Laura wasn't lying, and my mother succumbed to her injuries while in the hospital. Laura did not give me time to mourn, though, because she kicked me out a few days before we were going to bury my mom, saying that there was no money, so I had to do it on my own now that I'm 18. She said she agreed to take care of me until I was 18 and went to college, but it seemed now that mom was dead, there was no chance I was going to college. She said that mom left her absolutely nothing, therefore she has no obligation to bury her, I cannot imagine what makes a person so jealous of someone's life, their own blood, to the point of refusing to bury them. I did not put up a fight when she kicked me out, because there was nothing I was staying for anymore, now that mom was gone. I made the funeral arrangements with the help of members of the community, who were sympathetic to me, once I told them what Laura did. One thing she did not think about when she kicked me out was that not everyone in the community was wicked like her. She had a reputation for being a snob in town because her husband was rich, therefore many people disliked her. It was those people who supported me through my difficult time because they knew my mom and she's been kind to them when she was alive. With their help, I was able to bury my mom. 
As for school, I stayed with the teacher while I waited to graduate, after which I planned to just find a job. Laura was refusing to give me any money that mom gave me before she passed, even though she lied through her teeth every time I asked her. I'd seen the checks my mom sent her monthly with more than enough money to take care of me. I had accepted I was not going to college of my choice with no money. My grades were good, but not good enough for a scholarship. That was until one phone call changed my life weeks after my mom passed. A man, who claimed to be her attorney, told me that my mom had left me an inheritance. The man turned out to be legit. My mom left a small fortune that could sustain me for a very long time. I decided not to spend the money on useless stuff and instead make her dream of me going to college a reality. Therefore, thanks for her taking care of me from beyond the grave. I was close to achieving my dreams. I did not waste my chances. I got myself in order and focused on graduating. Once I did, I completed my education far away from Laura and her family, who had no idea that mom left me money. Fast forward to now, I'm the manager of a bank in a town just outside where I grew up. I worked hard to get here and never stopped aiming higher and higher, so mom can be proud of me wherever she is. I just wish she's been able to know what a bad person Laura was before she died. It was on a very busy day that I requested not to see anyone for a meeting, but by the time my assistant called me to inform me that some woman had disregarded the rules. An old woman who had already broken through, asking to see me. She had a look of hope in her eyes, like she's not slept in days, wearing clothes that had barely been scrapped together. In summary, like she's been through hell. I recognized her immediately and did not know how to feel. She did not give me a chance because she started speaking about some kind of loan extension and asking me to help her out. She did not recognize me, which I did not fault her for. After all, she had kept me thin and in hand-me-down clothes. I told her that I was not taking any appointments and she had to leave and reschedule for another day. She begged and said that she had no choice because she was running out of time. She's been a loyal customer of this bank for so many years, so she could not just leave. When I said, Laura, please leave now, I've had enough of you already. She looked me up and down really carefully, until a look of realization set in her face. She looked like she was going to pass out on the floor. When she realized that she's just come to beg to the man who she threw out when he was 18, her demeanor quickly changed to one I knew, the one she used when she tried to act like a good person to get what she wanted. She went on and on about how much she missed me and has been trying to find me for a decade now. She said that she was glad at least one of her children was successful in life. Then she told me all about what the family was up to and how happy they would be when they finally saw me. But the last straw was when she tried to hug me. All the pain I've spent years working through came back rushing to me. All I could think of was the pain I felt on my 18th birthday. I told her never to touch me ever again or she'll deeply regret it. I saw her sneer, but she hid it quickly and instead apologized for showing her happiness in my place of work. That's when I exploded. I asked her if she was missing a couple brain cells because we're not family. She was supposed to take care of me like her own child, but she let greed get in the way. I asked her to leave my office, never return, or I'll have her removed by security. She said that she could not just leave because her family's in trouble. In a few days, my bank was going to seize her assets. They failed to pay their loan. She said that her husband passed away, and after that, her sons took over the business, but they spent all the money and the business went bankrupt. All the borrowed money from the bank, and like the two log heads that they were, decided to gamble it all away and try to save the business and make enough money to finance their family. 
They lost all the money and lived off several loans for a couple of months. But now, my bank was going to take the last thing that they had. Their house. They were taking it to auction to sell off and get their money back. Her request was for me to grant them an extension for another year so they would look for more money. She got down on her knees, crying like I've never seen before and asking for forgiveness for way the way she treated me when I stayed with her. What she did was not something that I could have just forgiven. It caused a lot of psychological damage for me. I told her that I would be able to forgive her and grant her the extension if she did one thing. My condition was that she should go back in time and bring my mom back to me. She said that I was being ridiculous. I was asking her to do the impossible. I told her that is what she was asking me was impossible. I owed her nothing to be able to do such a huge favor for her. I denied her request and told her to evacuate her home by a certain date or we would forcefully remove her. I got security to remove her from my office after the grown woman started throwing a tantrum calling me names. That further reinforced my feelings that she's not changed and did not deserve forgiveness. A few days later, my bank seized her house and all her assets. I personally saw to it that she was removed from the property before we took the house. My cousins were there as well, and I could see they hated me from the looks in their eyes. But that feeling was mutual, so I did not care too much about it. Now they knew how it felt when they have been unjust towards me in the past. They're now living in one of the homeless shelters in my city, with no means of getting out, and I can say that I feel a bit better knowing that they're all paying for what they did to me. So this story was a lot to unpack. I just have one question for you. Did this lady deserve this treatment that she received at the end? I know, I know. She made OP's life miserable, kicked him out, took advantage of him, and did not care that his mother died. So, I'm going to say karma struck her and she deserved everything that happened. But there might be some less mean people, I guess, in the comments down. So let me know. Do you think it was fair, yes or no? I say yes. Okay, we're going to turn our attention to the final story of the video. And it's titled, My long-term girlfriend cheated on me, got pregnant, but everyone around me is pressuring me to stay with her. So, here's what happened. So, we grew up together in a small town, known each other for our whole life, and eventually fell in love when she was 17 and moved to the city together two years ago. I work as a carpenter, and she's still at university. Two weeks ago, she suddenly dropped the news that she's three weeks pregnant. I know for sure it cannot be mine, because I always use protection and never have sex under alcohol or drug influence. I don't drink or smoke. So I pressured her and she confessed. She slept with an exchange student during a school vacation trip. She says he's been hitting on her for weeks, but the sex was unplanned. That's why he did not have a condom prepared and she did not have pills ready. And it's only one time thing. She has no feelings for the guy. I was totally shocked, but after a day, I decided I can't stay in this relationship anymore. First, I'm not ready to raise a child that's not my own. Second, I don't know if I'm able to forgive her for betraying me. At least, not at the moment. So, I break it off. Ask my boss if I can stay the worker rooms for temporary workers at the warehouse and let my girlfriend stay at our place till she finds a house. I pay for rent because I'm the only one that works. So eventually, our families and our mutual friends got the news. Now, they're all pressuring me to get back with my girlfriend, except for my sister, who supports me. They say it's wrong to abandon her at a time like this. Especially my dad, who I had to fight with every two days because of this. He said he knows she's a good girl, just a young people making a mistake. That I should stay with her and give the child for adoption. And my friends kept messaging me, convincing me to take her back. One of them even accused me 
because I'm the reason she moved to the city, so it's my responsibility. Now, I'm heartbroken, lonely, and shattered. Feels like the whole world doesn't give a single duck about how I feel. I just wanted to move to a new city and start everything from zero, but don't have the courage. Maybe some advice from you guys would ease the stress. Alright, here's a little update. I did not think my story would get this much attention. Thank you all the guys for caring and giving me advice. I tried to read the comments that I could. I thought I could get through this alone, but you guys make me realize that I'm not alone. So I just called my little sister, and she'll be on the train to the city tomorrow morning to stay with me for a weekend. I also called my parents and her parents. They agreed to come to us this weekend and discuss this matter. I don't know how it's going to go, but I hope I can update my situation in the next few days. Here's the top comment. Your friends are being ridiculous. Listen to me. It doesn't matter if it's a one-time thing. This girl cheated on you. And then was hoping you would not realize that you could not have got her pregnant. She was going to pretend like you were the father the whole time. She cheated and lied and was going to let you raise a child that isn't yours. Without you knowing, she only told you because you pushed. Alright guys, let me know what you think of this. Everyone's saying kick her out of the apartment, tell her to go live with her baby daddy, you owe her nothing. And no, she clearly isn't a nice person. Well, let me know what you guys think. Is she truly this toxic as people are making her out to be? Drop your thoughts down below. Thank you so much for tuning in. That's all the content I have for you today. Tune in tomorrow as Mr. Redito does daily videos. And remember, it's cool to be kind. The latest Mr. Redito producer, Christine Billings. Thank you so much for the support.